Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our sixth episode of our Tank Workshop Diaries. Um, a bit of a special one, really. Um, we just had six weeks of tanks and action displays. Straight after Tank Fest, we normally go into the holiday season for the school holidays. And as you now know, we operate a tanks and action show every day during the school holidays. So the guys have been flat out doing that for six weeks and getting those vehicles ready. Um, every week was a different set of vehicles, which is a new approach, which I believe we mentioned uh, in one of the previous episodes. And we're trying to rotate our fleets and uh, allow us for driver training, get to know the vehicles better. The guys did really well. I'm very proud of what the workshop achieved, uh, but it is a very busy period. So over 40,000 people will have seen this show during those six weeks of holidays. Um, straight after that, um, we have now been um, preparing for Tiger Day, but also, and that's a special, really, the special one, we have been uh, kindly invited um, by the Royal Netherlands Army to take part uh, and an op what's called Operation Market Garden 75 um, by the organizers. Um, we, have been t we are taking part as part of uh, guests of the Royal Netherlands Army, the historic collection, to retrace some of the routes that the um, British 30 Corps um, did 75 years ago, uh, obviously this year. So we're very privileged and very honored to be able to honor the man that uh, served 75 years ago in Operation Market Garden. And we're taking five vehicles out on the road which is quite unusual for us, normally operate in the arena only. So we've selected five vehicles, uh, two Daimler Dingoes, um, one is from the museum's collection, one belongs to curator David Willey. Uh, we have a Morris Armored car that was featured previously in the Tank Workshop Diaries, where apprentice Jacob has done a fantastic job on the engine. And also our um, Daimler Armored car, the big Daimler that was previously restored to us by volunteers here for us at the museum. And the last vehicle, which is just been finished is the um, Sherman M4A4, the multibank Sherman, uh, again has been uh, restored for us and overhauled for us. Uh, it's privately owned, but it's on loan to the museum, um, has been restored to us off-site. So these five vehicles hopefully will uh, leave this Thursday to um, start the run on Monday. And this will be a five-day operation to retrace the routes. So about somewhere between 25 and 30 miles each day. Uh, for five days uh, and we we look forward to it. We also realize that we never operate vehicles that much on the road so it will be a new experience. We've also accepted not all vehicles may be able to make it so when we're uncomfortable we have the support from the Royal Netherlands Army to put some of these vehicles on low loaders if we have to. We don't want to risk staff or uh, vehicles but it's a fantastic opportunity for us to honor the sacrifices from 75 years ago. Uh, we just want to thank very much the organizers of Operation Market Garden 75 in, um, in the Netherlands and also specifically the Royal Netherlands Army Historic Collection. They have obviously joined us for the last four years now here for Tankfest with some fantastic um, uh, machines from their collection and now we're finally able to join them for one of their events so we really look forward to that. Uh, also want to thank um, Roy Blunt uh, from Firewatch Southwest. He has kindly donated to us fire extinguishers for our vehicles for the journey. And also Tim at Vintage Tires over Bewley has been very helpful in sourcing new tires for our Morris Armored car because, as I said before, we hardly ever go onto uh, the, the public road and some of these vehicles still had tires from 75 years ago, which is obviously not safe. Um, and now I hand over to Jonathan Kneebone, who uh, has been working with his team very hard to getting all these vehicles ready for this fantastic event. So over to Jonathan now. The first of the vehicles I want to talk about is the Dingo. This has probably had the most work carried out on it. And what's unique about this project is it's been done with both the volunteers and the permanent staff in the workshop. First job that was carried out by the volunteers during their weekend was to completely respray it and paint it. And then we had to move on to a complete rewiring of the entire electrical system. Because it's going on a public road, we wanted all of the lighting and the horn and um, etc. to work correctly. And sadly, all of the wiring was found to be um, inoperative, so the entire lot was done. The engine then uh, started off with a coolant problem, crack block, which we've then um, managed to sort out. A new piston rings and the engine been completely rebuilt by Jake and Les, and that's been put back together. The gearbox was outsourced at the time we were ironically um, putting together the Wilson gearbox for the Matilda so we couldn't do it so we sent that to a guy in Holland who did a very good job of um, putting that back together. Married the engine and the gearbox together. Um, now because of the access in the back of this 
testing it is not necessary to test it out on a stand and we didn't have time to do that anyway. So what we've done is we've put it in and we're carrying out all of our testing with the engine in the vehicle. Um, this obviously has a couple of inherent risks but we've wanted to take them because we just didn't have the time to do it any other way. If you come around the back, you can see the engine and gearbox in place along with the cooling system. Um, we can say right now the cooling system is watertight, we've already checked that. Um, they've got the oil tank down here and the air cleaner and the carburetor. Now we've had this engine running but it's not running correctly due to a faulty fuel pump. So right now what Bob is doing is he's sorting out the fuel pump so that it um, pumps enough fuel to keep this vehicle moving. Regarding the electrics, there's only one guy that we've got that can convert this into um, lights going on and horns working and that's Bob Darwood and he's rebuilt the um, electrics from the ground up, um, rebuilding all of the uh, cables, making sure that all of these dots are joined up and I'm glad to say so far everything checks out perfectly. This is the Daimler Dingo that the museum are planning to take to the uh, commemoration, 75th commemorations of the Arnhem operation. It's been recently repainted by the volunteers and I've been asked to have a look at the electrical system just to check it out, see what state it's in and in, we do whatever repairs are required. I'm just starting to strip the old cable out. On my first examination it became fairly obvious that most of it needed replacing, most of it due to age, but also before the museum came to the vehicle it's been tinkered with by somebody and they've added bits and pieces that really shouldn't be here or aren't done particularly well. So I'm going to strip all the old cable out and then uh, reinstall some new cable back into back to as it should be. From a technical point of view, the wiring installation uh, and circuitry is very similar to a contemporary car, in this case 1944. The only difference is as it's in an armoured vehicle, um, it's got this very useful tray instead of a wiring loom you'd have in a car and then most of the cables run down that tray fore and aft to the vehicle. Um, as I, say, as I explained earlier on it's had various repairs done to it over the years, um, this being a typical example. Um, it's had a piece of modern cable spliced into one of the old cables but the old cable has completely deteriorated as well and the insulation has gone so it needs completely replacing. Um, somebody also modified the, the wiring system to fit a trailer socket on which I've been asked to remove for authenticity purposes so it go back to the original wiring scheme. Um, when it's finished it will look the cabling insulation will be pretty similar to the one on the Matilda from Material Diaries. Um, you may recall that. Um, so I'll clean all the instruments up etc and then we'll completely redo all the wiring and hopefully it'll be alright for another 50 years. Now I started to work on the instrument panel, which you saw earlier on still in the vehicle. I've stripped all the paint off, which has unfortunately revealed some corrosion, which I'm just attending to. Once that's complete and been repainted, all the other components will have to be reassembled in it. A um, little job we've got to do is rebuild this switch, which is, uh, turns the blackout light on, the convoy lamp rather. Now unfortunately it was broken, however I had another broken switch in my stash of bits and pieces. Uh, which has given me the components so I can build a good switch out of the two. So that's that one there, that's the base, is the original base. I'll put part off of the other switch 
there's the actual switch mechanism that goes in just quickly show you how that goes in it won't fit now there. there we are so then when all this is put back together and fixed in we'll then have a operating switch We also have to attend to things like these gauges, which basically you only really need a clean. This is the oil pressure gauge. Uh, it just wants to clean up more than anything else and just check that everything's functioning properly. It seems to be okay initially. Uh, simple things like the panel lamp holders. Again, these have to be cleaned, make sure everything works properly. Just, just over the years, the vehicles acquired a lot of dirt and accumulation and grime and all these electrical components need cleaning. Another example will be something like this panel switch which again you can see the dirt it's dirt more than anything that will be serviced so it functions correctly before it's put back in there's no point in putting new cable onto a component that doesn't work properly or is uh, functioning badly tricky little job will be on this one is that in the past when this has been the switch was installed somebody's managed to break off one of the terminal screws so it's going to be a little tricky job getting that out but again this is the main switch that does the lighting and the ignition. Um, once again, that will be stripped, cleaned, and then put back into the panel and rewired. Uh, another job we have to do on this particular dingo panel is that there is a bottom plate that fits on there. Once it's in back in the vehicle to close the bottom of the instrument panel off to stop dirt, etc., getting in. Unfortunately, it's missing on this particular vehicle. However, uh, one of our other dingoes, a Mark 1 we happen to have in the collection, has got that panel which I've now measured and we'll uh, make a new one to fit onto the bottom of this to the same pattern. Just to bring you up to speed with the Morris Armoured car then, there's been quite a bit of work done on this. As you already know, the engine's been rebuilt. Um, we've done a lot of testing on this engine outside the vehicle and having put it in now, we've also had the opportunity to test it out on the road um, where it's performed quite well. We've done a 20 mile test run with it without any major issues. Um, we've managed to source some um, quite uh, rare tyres for this one that are brand new um, from a specialist. So what? What we're going to do now is replace the tyres and make sure it goes to Holland with a new set of boots. Uh, split rims on these which have the, and run flat systems which run inside make them a little more tricky than your average tyre. Um, so Jacob's taken them off now. We've used this opportunity to grease all of the suspension. And now there are some parts that we found extremely difficult to get hold of. And although the ones that are fitted, um, you know, they're not ideal, but we've got to run with them because we haven't managed to find source uh, the parts that we require. 
Uh, but essentially she's running much better now. Um, interestingly, when the, we did rebuild the engine, we found out that the spark plugs that they were using had very short threads on them. When we tried to put the uh, proper ones back in, the threads are built up with carbon. And so what was happening was the spark plugs were actually unwinding as we were running the engine. So we needed to clear them right out to get the plugs to go all the way down. This gave us, as you can imagine, a lot more compression and a much better performance out of the engine. As with the Dingo, uh, Bob's completed all of the electrical work on this vehicle, including some of the fun ancillaries. Unlike the other two vehicles, this particular platform, the Daimler Armoured Car, was done by an outside agency. Uh, when it came back to us, we noticed a few problems with the ignition system and the carburetors, so we managed to source some new ones from Holland, and Buzz has been putting them back together. Now, when they come in the boxes, they're single units that can be switched from one side to the other, so it's very important that he connected them together so that they could work in concert to uh, deliver fuel to the engine. As well as the carburetors, the uh, plug leads were changed as well, and the combination of those two fixes has made this engine much, run much better. The main difference with this particular job is the first time we've been asked to go out and do something where the vehicles do sustained mileage. Sustained mileage is an awful lot more difficult to achieve with older vehicles compared to running around the arena for events. Hence the reason we've tried to do as much testing as possible uh, to make sure um, that they're capable of doing their daily tariff of miles in order to do this. That said, these are incredibly old vehicles. Um, it's the first time that this has happened. And so it's, you know, we're all crossing our fingers that the work we've done is enough uh, to make sure that these vehicles fit to the end. But if they don't, we've learned valuable lessons on the sort of testing and the techniques that we need to employ to do extended mile runs. I'm here in the workshops and I'm going to be preparing my dingo for the trip out to Holland. Um, we're off on that Operation Market Garden. Now one of the things about military vehicles like this is they've got lots of grease nipples on and of course we've got things like the bevel boxes, the different joints, um, this is a fluid flywheel. So one of the things I'm going to be doing is checking the oil levels, making sure everything's suitably greased because if I'm entirely honest, um, some of this I find hard to get to now, I'm getting a slightly older man. I've taken the belly plates off, even though I've got them, so there should be armoured shields under here. But in terms of access, I, uh, the guy I bought it off, he always told me, he said, look, you know, you get more air circulation unless you're doing off-roading or, and I'm pretty certain I'm not going to drive over a, a mine. Um, so I've left them off. The good news is that's great because access is easier all the time. The bad news, of course, is a bit more muck and whatever crap tends to get up into the workings around there but uh, it's these things all of them leak oil the joints the uh, differentials everything else they tend to leak all the time which is in another way it's quite good of course because that oil is a bit of a preservative for especially when you've got mud water everything flying around as well and these uh, some of the cross members always fascinating when you put your hand here sometimes like the guys in the workshop you find a spanner that's stuck in the gunk it's been there since goodness knows how long, so uh, I think I found a penny piece in here when I first got it. But um, yeah, so you get all the uh, bits of wood, grass, you name it, and it's held together by a nice gooey layer of oil and a bit of mud. Um, that's probably helping preserve everything as well, so it's about an inch deep in there. 
it's going to do a fair number of miles out there. So um, luckily for me, and I say at this point with fingers crossed, the engine runs quite sweetly. So I've got less worries about the engine. It's just quite simply, it's been a long, long time since I've done a reasonable distance in it. So there's other issues. And as we always say, when we're demonstrating vehicles here at the Tank Museum, um, there's so many opportunities for things to go wrong, especially when you're looking at something that's 75 years old. The other thing I'm gonna do is I've got a lot of the kit over years. I bought the stowage for a vehicle like this. I'm quite lucky I've got the original proper type of jack, but I've got things that go inside like the map cases and everything. And I always think that's like kind of like doing the old modeling diorama, but on a one-to-one -one scale. Let's make these vehicles look a little bit more lived in. And again, the irony for me, I've got all this stuff. Surely now's the opportunity to actually show it off, put it with a vehicle so it's out there on display for when we go around the place. So uh, I'm hoping um, by the time you're watching this, we're probably off on our trip. Um, I'm hoping it all goes well. Let's see what happens. So here we are, ready to go. Uh, you can see the three vehicles loaded on the, the low loader. Cook Transport is providing the transport for us again. They're a preferred transport contractor. They do a fantastic job always getting the loads safely to and from. So this is leaving from Bovington to go to the port of Harwich. Um, and separately, they're picking up the multi-bank Sherman, the M4A4 from Armored Engineering in Kent. They've done a fantastic amount of work on it. And both will meet up tonight at Harwich for unloading early tomorrow morning. And what they'll do, they'll unload the, the four vehicles off the low loaders and drive them onto the ferry. Our staff and volunteers are doing this. Uh, once they're safely loaded, the support vehicles will also go on board the ferry and they're off to Holland then. On the other side, the Royal Netherlands Army will collect them on low loaders to bring them to the starting point just outside Eindhoven for the start, obviously, on Monday. The rest of us will uh, join in on Sunday because we have Tiger Day still to run on Saturday. So as you can see, at the moment we're taking three vehicles, the Daimler Armored Car, the Daimler Heavy as is also known, the Morris Armored Car and the Daimler Dingo. Uh, it's a significant event for us, 75 years of Operation Market Garden. We want to honor those men that took part in that uh, operation. And um, we also want to, as the, the Tank Museum, we also want to thank the Royal Netherlands Army. They have always supported us uh, uh, for events and now we can finally do something back. So, so and a special thanks again to the event organizing, organizers, the Liberation Task Force. They've done a fantastic amount of work setting this all up, getting all the permissions to drive through the towns with track vehicles, a huge amount of logistical exercise for them. So yeah, Liberation Task Force, thank you again. We look forward to this trip and it's going to be fantastic. Well, we're in Holland on Operation Market Garden. We'll also be doing some filming to put together about a half hour documentary on some of the actions that 30 Core took part in. And that will be posting before the end of the year on YouTube. So we hope you enjoy that content too.